My name is Cami Craig, and I'm the former center of the Women's U.S. Water Polo Team. I competed in the 2008, 12, and 16 Olympic Games, uh, a proud recipient of two gold medals and a silver medal. Uh, the silver medal was the first medal we won in 2008. Um, and it shaped how we prepared and pursued the 2012 and 16 games uh, to which we won two, two golds. Uh, I highlight that because I think it's easy for people to get excited about the gold medals. And um, I think that my, my Olympic journey would have been different if I hadn't started uh, with winning the silver um, because it, it shaped everything moving forward. Um, I was totally a product of the pipeline. I grew up doing our youth team, junior team, then eventually the senior team, um, and grew up playing all of the sports, right? I swam at the age of three, played basketball for seven years, dabbled in volleyball, softball, and then was introduced to water polo in about seventh or eighth grade, and it was kind of love at first practice. Um, it was all of those sports combined into one, and I got to keep my head above water and talk as much as I wanted to. <laughs> so I was like, I think this sport's going to work for me. <laughs> I'm still in the water, and I get to talk to all my friends and connect. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit about kind of my background with that. And it's an incredible career. I mean, for you to go to like three Olympics and win all these medals. And like literally, I mean, obviously water polo, the US women team is incredible and has been so successful over the years, but you're part of that, that crew that kind of made it to that gold standard. Um, yes. that's, that's really amazing. So I imagine you get to Rio, you win your gold medal and you retire on a high note. Um, yes. Is this how it went? Yeah, well, so definitely. So I, I think after the 2008 Olympics, I went straight back to school. I still had two more years at USC. Um, so I was kind of, and I think I was a week late for school. So it was like thrusted right back into reality. I'd been training for a year isolated, you know, and then all of a sudden I was like social in school, having to attend classes. I mean, that was like a massive transition in itself. Um, my junior year was a little rocky senior year, you know, I really kind of found a flow and got into a good style of playing leadership and, and being the, the student that I knew I could be. Um, and then ended up, you know, graduating college, uh, did a few seasons abroad and then competed in 2012, where we won our first gold medal as a, you know, as the women's U.S. water polo team. And I can remember after we were waiting in this like kind of holding room and we we're waiting for one of our teammates to get drug tested. The whole team was together plus staff and our head coach was sitting on the arm of the chair that I was sitting on. And I was looking at my medal, you know, in my hands, it was around my neck. And I looked up at him, my head coach. And I said, you want to do this? Like, you, are you ready to do this again? And he was like, Kimmy, could you just be in the moment? You know, like in my mind, I was like, this feeling feels so good. I can't imagine not not going for this again. Um, and so there was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to go for Rio um, after London. And I knew kind of going into the, the four-year quad for Rio that it would be my last Olympic Games. Um, I would retire at 29. I knew I didn't want to go back to the Games at 33. I was in a long-term relationship. You know, I was thinking like, life, there's life to be started. Like I've spent my whole 20s being a professional grinding, head down, playing the sport that I love. So I was pretty clear about my decision. Like, it, you know, the experience wasn't shaping my decision to come back. I, I knew that I was, no matter how it ended, I knew that this was going to be my last, which was a really cool thing to have in mind because it allowed me to just really lean in and say like, okay, this is the last time you're going to be doing this. This is the last time you're going to be doing that. So just enjoy it, push it, leave it all out there, soak it up, like sit at the table a little bit longer at dinner with the girls and have those conversations. Don't be in a rush to go back to your room and get rest, you know, or, 
you know, linger in the pool a little bit longer. This is the last time you're going to be at a venue of this caliber size and, you know, like just savor all of those moments. And so I really, and having it be my third time around, um, you know, I could really like be relaxed in it and enjoy all of those little things. Um, you know, Rio, I, we were going for gold. We knew that that was our mission and what we could potentially accomplish. And we did. Um, I left the sport with a, a fabulous, fabulous relationship with it. I, I loved water polo. Um, I, I loved the way that I was coached by our head coach. Um, you know, there's always bringing teams together. There's always different dynamics and challenges with that. You know, I was getting older. My, there's, we took two of my positions so we could sub for each other. And the one that I, the woman that I was training with, she was 18, 19 at the time. So like I was 29 and my, like my sub or, you know, who I subbed with was 19. And so I knew it was like, I was passing the torch, everything I learned, it was like pump it into like the younger players, like this is going to be it. So, um, I, I knew that it, you know, I knew that it was going to be my last and I got to retire at, on the top of the podium and, and with a really great relationship with water polo and having a really clear idea that I was going to be done. Like it doesn't get any more ideal than that. This is amazing to hear such an uplifting story of the end of your career, because we don't hear a lot of these. Yes. And it's amazing to hear someone who is able to put a date, an ending date and be like everything that happened for the next four years up to this, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to enjoy it even more. And with the maturity of, uh, of your age, but also having gone to the game a few times, you really know what that means. You're going to yes. really enjoy every single moment, um, every single experience, the games themselves, that medal. It's incredible. And it's super exciting to hear such a positive story. I'm curious um, how it went after the game. And if it continued on that high note, or if you struggled the same way as other athletes did. Yes. And, and I think even too, like through the last quad, it wasn't without its struggles. Like training for the Olympics is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, and, and so that, that comes with its struggles, but also that awareness of, you know, leaning in when, when, when it felt right. Um, after retirement, uh, you know, we, we all, we constantly hear about the post Olympic blues, um, the downs that come with it. You know, I experienced that in 2008, I experienced that in 2012. Um, but there was always something that like, you know, there was the next practice you had to go to the next team you had to start organizing, you know, uh, the next thing on the calendar. Um, and, after my retirement with Rio, I don't think that I could have prepared myself at all for what I was going to feel, what I was going to experience. So I think you've got to think about, I started, I've been an athlete my whole life. So I started competing at the age of three with swimming, got into water polo at the age of 14, 15. Um, and it was just like wildfire when I started water polo because I was moving really quickly. I mean, by the time I started when I was 15, by the time I was 20, 21, by the time I was 19, I was on my first national team, 18, 19, first national team. And then it was just full-time training nonstop until 29, 30 years old. So, I mean, that's a huge chunk of time. That's my entire twenties. That was, you know, while all of my peers are making mistakes and being college students and figuring out their first careers and having their first almost decade under their belt of working, um, I was still grinding in the pool, doing what I had always done since the age of 14, 15 years old. And so, um, I finished and, you know, it's that kind of thing of like, you're it, like the whole world's eyes is looking at you as you compete, you leave on a high, you want a gold medal, even sweeter, even better. And you go home to your apartment and you're alone. you know, you start thinking like, okay, well, what does like the new routine look like? And do I even really need a routine right now? And it's just kind of about like going to events and celebrating and partying and, you know, doing all the things and, you know, just playing and then that kind of rolls and, and then that kind of, that kind of gets old as well, you know, and then it's like, okay, well, what's next? 
And I had some, you know, ideas of what I wanted to do. I pursued working for a company and it just didn't work out the way that we had envisioned or designed. So I had to let that go. And that felt like the first failure, right? Um, I was in a 10 year relationship and I was just kind of grasping to like, Hey, can you like, you figure out like what I need to do. You figure out who I am. Like I put a lot of pressure on that relationship, um, which inevitably didn't make it through my transition and ended, which felt like the next failure, you know? Um, I, my wheels were spinning. Like, what do I do next? I just, you know, I lost the job that I thought I was going to have. I just lost my boyfriend and my dog. They left my apartment. So now I got like the whole rent. I'm not employed. I don't have health insurance. Um, I'm feeling pretty overwhelmed right now. What's the, uh, the length of time between the Olympics and that moment? It, I think this was the first, like, the most intense part of it was probably the first year. So like really at like month four, five and six, it really started getting heavy. Um, and, and really like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't grab any traction. I was just really kind of going downhill and just being like, well, what's like, what am I like, what am I doing? What's the point? What's the purpose? Like, where do I have to be? I feel like I'm, these failures are happening, which felt really, you know, I committed to one thing my whole life and gave it 110%. And to have something fail so quickly out the gate was so challenging. Um, and it, it, you know what, I'm, I want to replace the word failure with loss because I've experienced a lot of failure in my life, but I was experiencing loss, loss of identity, uh, loss of a relationship, loss of a new, you know, um, job. Um, and it was loss that was really hard because as much as I've experienced a lot of failure, I hadn't experienced a lot of loss. It's always been pretty clear in what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And, you know, you experience, you experience losses in, in an athletic career, but you know, you just, it's like, it, it, for me, it's just like adjust and move forward. Um, but this, this felt like a lot. I felt like I was like having to put on these new coats and try them on and see how they fit and how they look. And then I'd have to like strip them off because they didn't work. And it's like, I was getting tired of like trying on and hoping that it would, would fit and feel good. Um, and it just, it wasn't. And so I was just experiencing all these like losses over and over and over and over again in a state that I wasn't even feeling that strong or solid. Um, so that was really challenging, yeah. really, really challenging. How did it impact your, your mental health or your, your confidence? Because you, you said it and you play a, a ball game. So you have losses, you yeah. have failures, you know, and, and you pick yourself back up and you go and play a game and you prove that you can't win. Um, but this seems, this seems to have affected you in a different way. So mm -hmm. where, where was your head at? Yeah, I think it totally rocked my confidence. Like I, I had very little to no confidence um, during this time. My self worth and value was non existent. Um, for the, I was terrified to make a decision. Um, I was terrified to be alone. I didn't know how to be alone. I'd been around a team my whole life. Um, and for the first time I was really alone because again, you know, that relationship ended as well. Um, I was terrified of not doing it right, um, or getting it right away. Um, and there was a point where I had, I had driven, I think I got a burrito and I drove to the beach and I was eating my dinner in the car, looking over the water. And, um, I was really low this day, really low. And I was, you know, messaging back and forth with my mom. And I just told her, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't want to like, I don't need, I don't want to do this life. I don't want to do this. So that was the first time I had experienced like suicidal thoughts. Um, and I realized at that moment, because I wanted my mom to kind of like, again, I wanted anyone to fix me. Like mm -hmm. literally I was just running from like, support to support being like change me fix me like make me feel better like please get rid of this anxiety that's like constant this like 
you know, lack of comp, like just, I mean, anyone just take this away. And I had said that, and I realized that this was so much bigger than what, you know, my parents could help with, my friends could help with, and ex-boyfriend could help with, you know, I really needed to get, um, I needed professional help. And so after that day and having that moment, it really, it really kind of shook me. Um, and it was also really, I became really aware that I was the only one that was going to be able to do this for myself. Um, and I called a therapist and I said, you know, here's the situation I'm in. Um, and I, I just, I need help. So that started the, my process of, you know, going to therapy pretty consistently. Um, and I started to get my footing, right. Started to get my traction and really started to get two feet on the ground and started to work forward from there. Um, which was probably the best decision that I had, I had ever made for myself through that, through that whole transition. Yeah. And you had to like hit that moment, that rock bottom to realize that the answer wasn't external and it wasn't coming from someone who wasn't living your life. It was, it needed to be coming from you. Yeah. Um, was your family, you, you mentioned your mom, was your family kind of that small support system at the time when things were hard what about the relationship because you stayed in the same location as where the team trains or a lot of players are did you still have relationship with some of the athletes did you try to handle you transition and talk about it with others that were also transitioning out of playing yeah you know it's it's interesting because we're so fortunate to be a part of a team And there's moments where we connect with each other and talk, but just like, you know, just like your, your family can't take it on for you and heal that your teammates can't take it on for you and heal that your friends can't take it on for you and heal that. Like really, this is such a journey you have to go on alone. And so I think, you know, initially it was kind of like slow dripping to everyone, like feeling, you know, just enough, but like where I was at, like I needed some deep healing. I needed some like deep recovery. It wasn't like small conversations at this point that was going to help, you know, the healing process. I think those small conversations allowed me to realize like, wow, I'm really going through something right now. Um, some teammates saying like, oh yeah, I've experienced that, but like nothing felt like but are you experiencing what I'm experiencing right now? Because it feels life ending, right? It just feels like the worst thing ever. Um, and it's interesting because as I reflect back, I don't remember a lot of, you know, a lot of connecting with our teammates to share our experience of the challenges of transition, like in conversation or in like having a support buddy through that. Now, later on, I've had some really amazing processing conversations, reflection, um, you know, just really powerful and profound conversations with teammates. I have had like, you know, where we jump on Zoom and we work out twice a week to, you know, like through COVID, we've all learned how to do that kind of stuff now. I've had some things now that I'm in a, a, a more solid place. Um, I've had a lot more connections with my teammates through that transition process, but in the kind of deepest, darkest part of it, um, you know, I don't think any conversation with a teammate, I mean, or anyone at that point was going to help surface me except for me. Yeah. And they were probably going through the same challenges themselves. And then, you know, it's really hard to connect if you're both, you know, in, in really struggling place or all of you guys in struggling place and with little perspective on how to get yeah. out of it. Yeah. Um, really interesting. What about physically? How, how was your transition from a physical perspective? Like, how did you handle body changes or, you know, being less athletic perhaps mm -hmm. or more free with your nutrition and what you did or um, you know, just less exercising as well? Yeah, I think, you know, I was diagnosed with dyslexia and ADHD when I was seven years old. And rather than doing the medication route, my mom was really um, adamant about 
medicating me with movement, I guess, you know, getting me into athletics and doing that route and helping that manage my energy and having that kind of manage, you know, everything that came along with, with ADHD and dyslexia and those types of things. Um, and so I've always known, like, it's literally been, you know, as long as I can remember if I didn't feel good, um, or if I felt off, it was always like, can we go swim? Can we go run? Can we go play? You know? Um, and so I've been really connected to movement in my like mental health and even my physical, like how I feel. Um, and so I already had that relationship outside of like elite athletics. Um, and so I knew that when I was starting to feel really crummy in this process that I needed to go swim or surf or bike or whatever. And, um, I think that it just wasn't consistent. Right. And so I constantly felt like there's this like guilt or like irritation or, um, you know, like it, I just need to, I just need to, I need to do this. I need to do it. You know, there was never like, I was never settled in my relationship with fitness, um, for quite some time. I think, you know, my whole relationship with, with fitness totally changed. Um, it's interesting to get older. It's interesting to see your body change. And, you know, I was working out six and a half hours a day, six days a week. Like there's no way I could replicate what I was doing. Like, and I had like girls like pushing me to be better and pushing on me to like elevate how I worked out. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to do the same thing over again. It was too hard, you know? Um, but I think, you know, I've, I've always had a really great relationship with my body. Um, it was interesting that it became mine. So I was fully responsible for how it presented, how it looked, right? Like my body wasn't per se owned, but it felt that way. I sacrificed my body completely for the training that we we're doing. So I've always been super built, super strong, you know, super cut. Um, for the first time I was like getting curves as a woman. I was like, Hey, like this is cool, <laughs> you know? Um, so I invited that. Um, and I just think like, I think the biggest thing was like, oh, I'm responsible for this body now. I can't blame it on anyone else or say like, you know, oh, I'm training. That's why I'm, I'm like ripped, you know? <laughs> um, and, and just like starting that new relationship with like movement, like figuring out what's fun for me. Like, what do I enjoy? What can I actually wake up and be inspired to do every day? Cause it's not what I did, you know? Um, it's going to be new. It's going to be different. And so that still is a constant kind of, ebb and flow for me and being gentle with myself of, you know, some days I'm going to feel like killing it myself. And some days I'm going to feel like I'm going to sleep in <laughs> and get other work done. And that's definitely a work in progress for all of us, I think, as you go past, you know, your competitive years. But there's a nice part of this where it's nearly like reconnecting with what you felt as a kid when you started sport, any sport. It's yeah. like refining that, that joy in the moment, in the process, in the movement, like those feelings are coming back. And it's, it's really, it's really interesting. Um, so how, you're working with your therapist, you're trying to like figure your way out of this. What other things outside of the therapist or helped you in that moment? Like what were, what other things were you doing? Or maybe yeah. the therapist recommended to uh, to help you move forward. Yeah, so I think therapy was a huge staple for me and a place to start. Um, I was seeking mentors and found three people that were really important in how I was going to look at moving forward. Um, and this wasn't, you know like mentors that were provided to me through any sort of like USA water polo services or US national team services. These were like true authentic, like I met them by chance, conversation started. And I was like, Hey, I, you know, like, can we maintain this? Can we continue to meet for coffee or have these strategic conversations? And um, that felt really good and it felt natural and it felt authentic, um, which was really cool. And, and I would say these three mentors really shaped kind of the direction I went and showed me what was possible for me in a time where 
you know, my self-confidence was really not in a good place, but even more so I just didn't know, you don't know what you don't know. And so I just went through this really like, I mean, we're constantly learning. I will always be in a season of learning, but a really in-depth season of learning of what's possible for me, what's capable for, like, what am I capable of doing? Um, and a lot of that came from the knowledge of my mentors. So a therapist, mentors that were really kind of, you know, they weren't necessarily in the field I was looking to go, but were kind of around it and more so just had a really great authentic connection with me. Um, I did a lot of like, giving back to my sport, working with youth, empowering my youth, um, and helping and serving others, which really helped me, um, and helped me find my footing. It, it was in a way that these were things that I knew for sure. My confidence was very much aligned in the way that I was helping youth athletes. And that, that was a, a really, that was a good place for me to grab my footing as well. Um, there's a program called Merging Veterans and Players, MVP, um, mm -hmm. which brings, yeah, veterans together and, and elite athletes. Um, and I found myself going there every Wednesday, we'd work out and spend, you know, an hour working out, then an hour on the mat, just talking about the wins and losses of transition, um, which was amazing. So community, you know, community was really important. And I think, there was like a part of me that needed to like kind of disconnect to reconnect to um, the water polo world. Like I needed to find help outside of that. So I didn't feel like there was this kind of like, I don't want to get stuck, right? Like I don't want to get stuck with where I'm at. Like this like sense of like, I need to get out. I need to go. I need to move, right? So I think if I was going to boil it down, it was like therapy, mentor, community and serving others that was kind of my recipe to get forward movement um, out of some of these kind of darker, clunkier areas and purely just like movement and working out, like staying active and, and fit and, and playful. What helped you shape more the professional side of your path? you're finding all these answers from different people around you and different activities that you're doing. Um, but at that moment, do you have an understanding of, of where you're going or you're just trying to like get out of this hole and sort of like settle before you have a direction or you already have some thought of the future? Yeah, I think, um... What helped me shape that is, yes, asking questions and being a student with, with my mentors and what they had to offer, but just being open to opportunity. You know, I was trying on a lot of different things. You know, I built, um, you know, I built a business to do water polo camps and clinics for specifically female water polo players. That's, you know, I've got a PhD in water polo. Like, that's a great place to start. But, you know, building out like your your business license and thinking about mission state, like having the rep of like building a business. Is it anything big and massive and impressive? No, but it was like my first rep in figuring out what that was. Um, you know, doing these different speaking engagements, being asked to um, deliver certain things. You know, people were asking for giving me opportunities and asking for specific things. And I, it was like a challenge of like, okay, well, how do I, how do I meet that? And through every speaking engagement, workshop, camp or clinic that I did, I was learning. Um, and I was kind of learning more of like, okay, what, what am I connecting with? What am I not connecting with? That was really hard. I never want to do that again. Um, or that just didn't feel like my vibe um, that felt forced or not authentic. So I'm not going to do that again. Um, and you know, the opportunities of like, oh, hey, you know, we're doing, we're doing this. Do you want to try this? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll try it. Um, and so I just had to try a lot of different things and try on a lot of different things, which I had to be so courageous to do um, because it felt like a lot. Um, and I felt like there was a lot of expectation and standards because I'm a gold medalist, you know, I'm an Olympian. So like, it, it's got to be perfect. And I was like, of course it has to be perfect. Right. So I was putting that pressure on myself. So, um, I had to be really courageous in the way that I, I kind of, you know, approached all these different things. Um, but I think, you know, as opportunities came, I started figuring out like, oh, this is where I really start feeling 
this is where I'm feeling good. This is really what I want to do. Um, and it led me into um, a company called Rise Athletes, where I mentor youth athletes and work on mental skill set training, real confidence building, just kind of identity work. I mean, all the things that I felt I needed, I get to bring to these youth athletes way before the end of their careers, which is such a gift and phenomenal. Um, and just really working on these young athletes as who they are as a whole and not just an athlete. Um, and, you know, how do we implement rest and recovery as a part of our training? Um, and how do we speak and advocate for ourselves? You know, these are some of the, some of the many things that we work on. Um, I also work for a company called Mindful Warrior, where I do executive coaching, uh, performance coaching and culture design. So how do we build effective, efficient teams uh, that are healthy um, and we can we can bring you know the best out of each other in those teams. Um, and so, and this all feels so aligned to what I was doing as a national team player. It's exactly what I was doing, empowering my teammates and bringing teams together to compete at the highest level and be top performers. Um, so that's been really cool, but it's taken me to now to get there, which I'm like, five years, that's not bad, right? <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, like, that's okay. That was fine. But I mean, it felt like I was crawling and it felt really painful at times. I think 10 years is pretty good. A lot of people haven't even figured out in like 30 years, you know, so that's a good uh, reason. I know it feels slow for any athlete to think you get out of your sport and, oh my God, it's going to take five, six, seven years, but it's true. It takes a lot of yeah. time and you've got to like balance that with how much time you spend in your sport. But I love how it like merges your, uh, it's a reflection of what you did in your last team where you were mentoring yes. that younger athlete but also the, the need that you have to expand kind of a little bit further than just water polo. And you've been able to merge those two things together, which is amazing. It's um, been incredible to learn who I am outside of water polo. Like, I feel like I've been introduced to a whole new part of myself. Um, and in a lot of ways, I feel like I've been introduced to myself for like the first time. Um, because I think there's, there's a part of training for the Olympics and, and being an elite athlete where we really, or I've really become so good at compartmentalizing, right? Like just staying focused in what we're doing. And, and we don't really have the opportunity to unravel because that would affect the next practice, the next game, making the next team, the next tournament. Right. And so there's just this. I felt like I was living in this really tight space for a really long time. And once, you know, I left that and retired and got comfortable starting to open and learn more about myself outside of water polo and take all of the cool things that I've learned from being an elite athlete. Um, this has been, I mean, this has been such a cool season of my life and I think it'll continue to be and the parts where I've been able to kind of like soften and open up and be a little bit kinder to myself that maybe I didn't let exist as an elite athlete um and I'm really loving who I'm becoming it's a it's a really neat thing um and it's a courageous journey and it's heart blistering and it's hard hard work it's such a positive message because I think for many athletes, it's really hard to think past sport. And it's really hard to think about that next life. I think we have this idea that, you know, your best years are behind you and this is it. This was exceptional. I did this great thing. Now what? You know, I can't top this up. But you actually, there is a whole discovery and there's a whole new level and it might not look like what you did before, but it will be as interesting, as challenging, as exciting as what you've done before. And so I, I so agree with that message. And you now get to carry, you know, that strong kind of focus athletes alongside tons of other interests and, and character, character traits that are, you know, incredibly positive. So nice to hear that. Um, so if you had any message for athletes who are now, you know, post Tokyo retiring, um, 
or not sure what they're going to be doing, it, you know, do you have any specific advice for them? Yeah. Yeah. I think the first thing for like most important is that we have to normalize that it's challenging to go through transition, any sort of life transition and, you know, retirement as an elite athlete or a lifetime of being an athlete is right up there with the best of the transitions. Right. Um, and I think we have to normalize this. We have to talk about the challenges of it. We don't need to hide from the world. We don't have to hide from our support groups. And, um, like this is to be expected. Um, and it's a hard thing to prepare for because it, it unravels and shows up differently for all of us. Um, and I think what's really important or was important for me is that the feelings that we feel and even the most intense times will not last forever. And to not try to avoid, go around, ignore the feelings that you're feeling, but to feel them and sit in them and get curious about them um, and know that you'll, you'll pop out on the other side. And if we allow ourselves the time to sit in those feelings, inevitably it will give us the next step. And it just is one small step at a time. We don't need to know what's going to happen in a month. We don't need to know what happens in a year or five years. We just need to simply know what we're going to do in the next hour, next three hours um, to the end of the day. So not to overwhelm ourselves and that's okay. And pretty soon those days are going to turn into weeks to months to years and you'll find yourself right back on your feet. But it's a big, big change. The feeling won't last forever be courageous in those feelings, you know, stand firm in those feelings and, and just know it. you just got to take it one small step at a time. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Super uh, encouraging to hear that. And in the fact that we really have to talk about it as athletes, but also for former athletes to be ready to have those conversation and be available to anybody who reaches out to anything that you would have done differently in your own transition that's a great question because I think it's you know I think all of the hardships the rock bottoms the you know radical behaviors the like you know all the things that I experienced really led to the the help that I needed um I think there's always a sense or an element of like ooh, am I getting the most out of myself there's always a fear of like my whole thing is like don't sleep on your gifts, like make sure you are maximizing them and like putting them out there. Like the last thing I'd want is to have like a super awesome water polo shot and only use 50% of it. Right. Um, so I think, you know, and that just comes with still learning. So I think if, I don't think there's really anything I could have said I would want to do differently. And I don't think, you know, even looking back at my water polo career, like, would it be nice to have three gold medals? Yes. But like the silver taught me so much. Um, and, and that's mine. It's part of my journey. So I think the help needed to come when it came. And I think the conversations came when they needed to come and I did, took the chances when they needed to happen. And, and so it is, you know, and I'll continue to do the same, um, and keep my head up and be curious and, keep continuing to figure out how this, how this life is going to unravel. Yeah. And this, this transition, the way it went is what, what you're here and taught you what, what you're, you've learned and what you're doing now. So, you know, it, it has to go a certain way. I always think that it has to go a certain way for you to grow in a certain way as well. Um, we're going to finish on one question. Are there any clear um, lesson learned or character trait that you've developed, skills you developed as an athlete that you can point to and say, okay, I've got this from sport and it's really helping me every day. Um, yes. So I think just trusting that I'll get through it, you know, like, I mean, the practices I've survived, you know, the, the teams we've put together, the travel trips, like 
I just, I don't have any doubt that I can find a way through. Like, is it going to be pretty? Maybe not. Like, is it going to be perfect? Definitely not. Like, you know, or maybe it will be, I don't know, but like, I just, I, I will bet on myself always that I will find a way, um, and make it out on the other side and that I'm capable of learning. And so, you know, I've gotten so many reps in that and I get to apply that to like all the things that I'm doing now. And sometimes I'm like, Oh, that was just a really crummy run. And you know, like I know how to prepare now and move forward. Like I know how to prepare and execute. And I know when I underprepare and underperform, we just know how to do that. We've been doing it forever. And that's beautiful. That confidence that you're going to get through anything. Yeah. And you've proved it in your sport and then you transition out of sport and you proved it in another field. And so you can go anywhere now. It's fantastic. And getting through it doesn't mean always winning, right? Getting through it may just like mean you survived. (laughs) And you learn whatever lesson you had to learn through that specific experience. And it just adds another layer to your whole persona. Yes. Well, Cami, thank you so much for like sharing this whole experience, your journey, what you've been up to since you retired um, and all the advice and learning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.